Dom and his agitating executioner. To me, this was simply fascinating. And too much of a spectacle for me not to have some thoughts to share with you. Let me sit down. Oh, to Dom and It'd be real nice if we could talk about the Bible only. The problem is, current events today are happening so quickly, it is the Bible. The king of Babylon, the king of Persia, the end time beast, you can't separate the Bible from current events. Independent news. Independentnews.com.co.uk. Listen, I'm going to read this quickly. Saddam Hussein went to his death in a scornful exchange with a masked hangman who taunted him with sectarian jibes, even as the noose was tightened around his neck. Grainy and jerky video circulating on the internet, apparently filmed on a mobile phone, contrasted with the officially sanctioned pictures broadcast by Iraqi television on Saturday, which bestows a silent dignity on the Iraq dictator's last, mo last moments. But in the 2 minute 30 second, 37 second version, broadcast by Al Jazeera TV yesterday, it, on, as a side note, I always wonder how Al Jazeera TV gets all these messages from Bin Laden and Ayman al-Zawahiri. You ever wonder? And it's like, oh, I don't, we don't know where Bin Laden is, we don't know where Ayman al-Zawahiri is, but they just, all these things get dropped off at our front door, all these tapes, audio tapes. But, hello, Al Jazeera knows exactly where Bin Laden is. How else can they have these things showing up in their offices and not know where it's coming from? I'll move on. He can be seen hurt and heard exchanging insults with his Shiite executioners and other witnesses. Saddam's final words were in keeping with his court appearances during which he railed against his tormentors and the invaders of his country. National Security Advisor Mufak al-Rubai told the New York Times that one of the guards shouted at Saddam, you have destroyed us, you have killed us, you have made us live in destitution. Saddam responds, I have saved you from destitution and misery, and I have destroyed your enemies, the Persians and the Americans. Saddam responded, God damn you, the guard said. Of course, Allah curse you, and not they didn't use GD. God damn you, said Saddam, and see they were throwing the curse back and forth, because we know how Allah means the personification of the curse. See, they were trying to mark, they were marking each other. You understand what was happening in his last minutes? They were marking each other with the mark of the beast. Bruno, does this blow your mind? They were marking each other with, I mean, it blows your mind. The assembled witnesses to the execution gathered below the gallows and could be heard ignoring appeals for propriety. As a man shouts, Muqtada, Muqtada, Muqtada. That is a reference to the powerful young Shiite militia leader, Muqtada al-Sadr, whose father, a revered Shiite cleric, was executed by Saddam in 1999. Saddam hits back, do you consider this bravery? Now wait till you hear Saddam's version of bravery, and I read you this next letter from a soldier in Iraq, a member of your arms to Israel. She's been communicating with me from Iraq. Wait till I read you Saddam Hussein's bravery. Wait till you hear this. And by the way, what the Western mind doesn't understand, and what the Western mind has to understand, to us there's family life, there's social life, there's military life. We, we, we segment all these aspects of our society, not in Islam. In Islam, religion, life, society, customs, uh, worship, eating, it's all a religious experience. Everything in Islam centers around Sharia law. It's all centered as a religious, whether they're sleeping, whether they're eating, if they're beating their wife, if they're taking new wives, if they're having sex, it doesn't matter. Whatever they do is based on religious law, so it's a composite amalgamation of their life, all emanating from the Quran. What does the Quran mean? 
No hell, what does Quran mean in Arabic? You know, come on. It means the recitation. Muhammad is reciting what Allah allegedly gave him. It's called the recitation in Arabic. Muqtad al Sada, whose father Saddam Hussein killed, Saddam hits back. Do you consider this bravery? Another voice praises the founder of the Shiite Dahwa party, who was executed in 1980, along with his sister by Saddam. The images which can be viewed across Iraq and the world can only heighten the sectarian tensions between Shia rulers and the Sunni minority, which have brought the country to the brink of civil war. By the way, everywhere Islam rules, there's civil war. You ever hear of Black September in Jordan? King Hussein, you know, the friend of the United States, fought the Palestinians for over a year and kicked them all out into what today is the Palestinian-occupied West Bank. There was a civil war in Jordan in the 1970s. In Tunisia, where the Palestinian government fought the Tunisian government, there was a civil war. In Lebanon, today, because of Shiite supporters like um, Hezbollah, there's a civil war between Arab Christians and Muslim Christians. Everywhere the beast takes government, civil war breaks out. It's not the exception, rather it's the norm. With a noose wrapped around a black scar, placed around his neck, Saddam begins reciting the Muslim profession of faith, the Shahida, or the Shahada. He had carried a Quran as he entered the gallow chamber, dressed in a black overcoat. I'm not going to say anything. There is no God but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad is the messenger of God. He intones, he repeats, there is no God but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad, and then there's silence. His words end abruptly, halfway through the second verse, as he falls through the trap door, and the 69-year-old former dictator can be seen swinging on the rope. The tyrant, and you see the way the American media has twisted this thing around? Like we're responsible for the unprofessionalism of the execution. As if Saddam Hussein was a professional, was professional when he gassed his own people and when he, when he tortured, butchered, and raped and massacred almost a million of his own citizens and started four wars against four sovereign countries. He fired missiles at Israel, he invaded Kuwait, he was poised to invade Saudi Arabia, which is why Bush stopped him in the Gulf War, and he killed his own people, the Kurds, and he attacked and invaded Iran in a war that lasted for eight years. Four sovereign nations were attacked by this madman. And now the media started to twist, they're trying to make you feel sorry for his last minutes, you see? That's exactly what they're trying to do, to build sympathy so you feel sorry for this guy. There is no God but Allah, and I testify to Muhammad, and his words end abruptly halfway through the second verse, as he falls through the trap door, and a 69-year-old former dictator can be seen swinging on the rope. The tyrant has fallen, comes the cry. Let him swing for three minutes, are the last words on the video. The dictator's last words again, Saddam, this is in order now, sequential order. Saddam. O oh Allah, voices, may Allah's blessings be upon Muhammad and his household, and may Allah hasten their appearance and curse their enemies. Voices, Muqtada, 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 Saddam, do you consider this bravery? Voice, long live Muhammad Bakir al-Sadr. Voice, to hell. Voice, please do not, the man is being executed, please, no, I beg you, stop. Saddam, there is no God but Allah, and I testify Muhammad, is the messenger of Allah. There is no God but Allah, and I testify Muhammad, and his last words were Muhammad, the mark or the number of the man. His last word was the word Muhammad. I thought you'd find that interesting. Well, this is a little bit long, but we're a long kind of people, aren't we? We long-winded, and we long, we love the things of Yahweh. 